here on Debaco University, I'm going to provide a brief overview of reverse osmosis. Let's look at reverse osmosis use for cannabis production. Well, first off, the basics of the reverse osmosis system. Well, re reverse osmosis is a filtration system. It's a method that can remove up to 95 to 99% of dissolved salts in any water sample. As a result, it's the most common option for desalinating water on a large scale. Reverse osmosis uses high pressure to force water through a semi-permeable membrane, which results in salts on one side of the membrane and pure water on the other. So as we can see here, normal osmosis would have water kind of working its way. Pure water would go try to dissolve the contaminants or salt particles here. Reverse osmosis has the same semi-permeable membrane, but takes applied pressure and forces that water going backwards, the reverse process, and squeezes the water, if you want to think about it that way, through this semi-permeable membrane, only allowing pure water to come out at this far end. However, this process can be wasteful um, if access to water is limited because there needs to be kind of a bypass of water with the system. There's typically a six to one ratio with six parts being fed into the system for every one part of pure water that is produced. So while it can is great producing pure water, it can be a little wasteful in that six to one ratio. So again, keep that in mind if water is a very limited resource for you. Why would you want to remove minerals? Well, RO water, reverse osmosis water, will essentially have no minerals. This allows growers to now control what is added to the water. If RO water is fed directly to plants, then calcium and magnesium deficiency is likely. So the reason why we have water starting with basically nothing is that allows uh, whatever part per million you're trying to desire uh, can be all of the elements or nutrients that you're looking to add to the water. If you already have high part per million water, uh, it's going to limit the amount that you can add uh, to make sure your plants are properly fed. Reverse as well as this process in very quick sense, there's typically a three or four stage kind of filtration process. Typically that first stage is a sediment filter simply because we don't want to clog any of the downstream components. Then the important carbon filter, then we have the impurities are removed, and then we have a post-carbon filter. So there are two carbon filters, a pre and a post, and there can be multiple stages of these filtrations. The whole goal here, again, is to produce that pure water, um, as close to that pure water or as possible, uh, but remind reminder that there is that six to one ratio of lost water. So you need to have a way to kind of drain out that um, wastewater. It's not harmful water. Uh, it's just through the reverse osmosis process, it's needed to kind of flush the system continually to ensure you're producing that as close to possible zero EC or zero part per million end result water. 